Hey guys and welcome back to another lecture of Dental Pachala where we help you understand and learn dentistry better and easy way and this video we are going to talk about oral radiology. So without further ado, let's get started. And welcome back to another lecture. This video is a continuation video of radiation effects on the oral tissue. Last video we have covered on the general tissues, how it affects the cell division, how it affects the nucleus, how it affects the mitosis, all these things and the different type of cells. Now it is the time that we talk about specific oral tissues. So the most common carcinoma, we know that it is the squamous cell carcinoma. What do we give to treat it in case of large lesions? We give the... See, radiotherapy cannot be given to all of the cancers. So, specifically, we need to see that if the lesion is malignant lesion or it is the radiosensitive cells are involved. Because radio... Now we know that in the previous video, we have studied that radiosensitive cells will be affected with the radiation therapy and radio resistant cells will not get affected with the radiation therapy so all the basal cells are the radio sensitive cells which are the most radio sensitive cells that is the use that we have studied the last part so in case of advanced lesion in case of deeply invasive lesion which we cannot Treat it via surgical approach. For example, suppose if tumor is present at the nasopharynx or if the tonsil is involved or if the tumor is involving the soft palate, hypopharynx, so all these areas wherein we cannot go surgical approach, we can do the radiation therapy. Like if carcinoma is present in the alveolar ridge or if carcinoma is present in the salivary gland, then we can easily do the surgical excision. So, there are again, now we know that to do the radiation therapy. Now, second thing is that what should be the dose of doing the radiation therapy? Now, uh, how we should give the radiation therapy? So, we have talked about in the dose rate. If you remember last video, we have talked about the dose rate. So, we have talked that slower rate is better than compared to single large dose. So, the fractional multiple small doses we give. And these small doses which we give in the fractions multiple times is more effective because it is going to increase the cell repair, it is going to increase the oxygen tension in the tumor cells. So the tissue response varies with the dose we give and also varies with the fraction of, uh, for a number of fractions, the fraction of times we give the dose. So there is something known as nominal standard dose. So the dose source of radiation we give for radiotherapy is our cobalt and the implant material so what we do sometimes you know what we do in case of tumor we are going to implant this radioactive material and this radioactive material is going to um, uh, is going to scatter the radiation so this is kind of that kind of uh, implant material can be a radon material or it can be iodine uh, 25 so all these things we can give in case of uh, that, that are all the radioactive materials actually uh, we can give for the radiation therapy so what are the effects after effects of radiation therapy right we know that or the effects during the radiation therapy because the first of all talking about the oral mucous membrane we know that basal layer is the most sensitive radio sensitive so we have talked about in the previous video itself that vegetative are the most radio sensitive second most are the differentiating intermitotic cells right now what happens at the end of second week so by the end of second weeks there is some uh, beginning of the redness there is some beginning of the inflammation so that is the patient develops the mucositis at the end of the second week now what happens after the second week after the second week there is going to be white to yellow pseudomembrane which is formed so pseudomembrane now what happens by the end of therapy so when the radiation therapy is ended then the patient has got mucositis is now severe there is maximum discomfort so patient has to maintain a good oral hygiene patient you, you know what happens that by the end of the radiation therapy usually the patient are unable to eat 
सो दे हैव अंडरगोन सो मच ऑफ डिजास्टर सो मच ऑफ स्ट्रेस आफ्टर द रेडिएशन थेरेपी इवन दो दे सर्वाइव फ्रॉम द कैंसर बट इट इज वेरी हार्ड टू फाइट विद द आफ्टर इफेक्ट ऑफ द रेडिएशन थेरेपी ऑल्सो सो इवन टू ईट सम मोस्ट ऑफ द पेशेंट्स मे नीड इवन द टॉपिकल एनेस्थेटिक्स to eat during the meals and there can be also secondary infection which is our candida albicans so now what happens when the uh, the uh, two months are over two months after two months after the post radiation therapy so after the radiation therapy is done there will be recovery which we see after the two months but what happens after few months what happens after few year all this mucus membrane it starts getting atrophied it start getting thin so if you see these people who have undergone the radiation therapy you see they'll have a very thin fragile uh, mucus membrane the mucosa is very thin atrophy uh, mucosa you will see avascular mucosa so what are the long term effects on the oral mucus membrane the long term effect is there is going to be the atrophy of the mucus membrane this is uh, due to progressive obliteration of the um, capillaries and there is fibrosis of the connect you know what happens after the radiation therapy these walls of the micro you will see this written in the book fine vasculature so fine vasculature is nothing but the capillary so what happens there is going to be the, uh, this radiation therapy it affects the uh, uh, cells of the capillaries so th when it affects the cells of the capillaries so there is going to be obliteration that means this start diminishing so there is going to be reduced vascular supply and everything is revolving around this because there is a reduced blood supply so uh, not everything is getting the blood so there is what happens when the cell is not getting the blood that means it is not getting the oxygen that means it is not getting the nutrient when something is not getting the nutrient or when something is starving for a long time it undergo death which is the cell uh, necrosis so these cell undergo necrosis coming to the second one we have got taste bud taste bud are be also sensitive to the radiation so there is going to be loss of taste which a person is seen and usually it starts from second to third week when the patient is taking radiotherapy after second to third week they'll start uh, feeling this that they feel that there is a loss of taste and especially what happens if the anterior one third of the tongue is radiated then we see that patient has lost the sensation of the salt there is going to be altered salt and sweet sensation and if the patient is irradiated posteriorly two third of the tongue is irradiated then usually there is going to be taste and sensation of bitter and acid flavors so what happens why there is a loss of taste sensation because the taste bud are decreased in the number after the radiation therapy it can decrease up to 1000 to 10000 taste bud can de decrease also we know that there is decrease in the saliva why decrease in the saliva because of the salivary gland because of the parenchymal cells of this we will talk about because of the cells of the salivary gland because of that there is less secretion when there is a less secretion there is less saliva when there is less saliva caries happen taste sensation won't be there because of the saliva ph will increase so so many things because of the saliva basically oral tissues we see that there is because of the loss of saliva we see because of the xerostomia we see all these things also but the taste sensation will reoccur so the, the recovery will occur 60 to 120 days after the radiation therapy is over then the taste sensation start coming back so coming to the third one is our salivary gland so what do we see in case of salivary gland we know that the uh, ductal cell acinar cells they require they they are not that radio sensitive they are actually on the other hand they are radio resistant but there are other things also you know what happens the salivary gland actually at times get exposed unavoidably and mostly we see that there are changes in the parotid gland parotid gland second most common is the submandibular or the sublingual gland now the reason is unknown so the parenchymal component of the salivary gland is the radio sensitive component what do we see these serous acinar cells there is going to be the uh, inflammatory changes initially we see that acute inflammation and later on stages we see that there is chronic inflammation 
so immediately after exposure we are going to see the acute inflammatory reaction in case of serous acinar cells and also we see there is going to be increase in the serum amylase so this serum amylase will start appearing after the suppose uh, now that we are i took the radiation therapy so after 3 hours of radiation therapy there will be increase in the salivary amylase maximum salivary amylase will be seen at 12 to 24 hours that means within the first day after that it start decreasing it will get normal after the 96 hours so with the time this acute inflammatory reaction is converted to chronic inflammatory reaction so there is going to be progressive fibrosis adiposis there is going to be we know that there is going to be loss in the fine vasculature there is going to be loss in the capillaries that is why i told you obliteration of the capillaries happen when there is no blood supply there is nothing the cells start dying so there is going to be parenchymal degeneration and first week we see that there is going to be progressive loss in the salivary secretion so the first week first few weeks only the patient will have zero stomia the patient will have dry mouth and because of this dry mouth there will be swallowing difficult uh, difficulty the patient will feel dysphagia the patient will feel painful swelling because when there is no saliva then the swelling speech everything becomes difficult and also there are many things which we see in the saliva we see that there is going to be increase in the so or some ions sodium uh, then uh, we have got um, carbon calcium magnesium all these ions we see that protein are also increases but the lubricating properties are lost of the saliva so the ph if we look at the patient who is undergoing radiation therapy we see that there is going to be Minus one pH. So normal. Suppose if normal pH is six point five. So in the radiation therapy, we see that pH is five point five. So we see that there is a one minus pH, and because of this, there is increase in the S mutants. There is which causes caries. There is increase in the lactobacilli, which progresses the caries, and there is going to be increase in the candida, which is going to cause candidiasis. so the buffering capacity of the saliva in the patient who are taking radiation therapy is reduced up to 44% coming to the next one so salivary gland actually undergoes um, degenerative changes and mostly there is a decrease in the saliva which is the zero stomia we see so coming to the next one is the teeth adult teeth are resistant to direct exposure to the radiation there is no effect of enamel dentin or cementum which we see but then what, what is the effect on the teeth there, there is going to be destruction of the tooth bud there is going in, ch in children suppose if if a child is taking radiation therapy then the tooth bud will be destroyed so there will not be primary even there will not be permanent also because we have studied that the tooth the primary tooth bud only will one portion will give rise to the second uh, the permanent tooth bud right so there is going to be growth retardation and if very low dose is given then also in the child there will be hypoplastic enamel formation so coming to the next one caries you know what radiation caries are equal to rampant caries rampant caries we have already studied in the pedo so rampant caries are going to destroy all of the teeth and the reason is decrease salivary flow decrease ph decrease viscosity so the debris it start accumulating quickly because there is no saliva to flush out the debris right so what happens we see that there are three kind of caries lesion so first one are affecting the cementum and dentin so when it is affecting the cementum and dentin that means there are going to be cervical caries you know what how cervical caries progresses as the cervical area so they it start it start at one uh, point and it is going to go around the whole teeth circumferentially it is going to involve so there will be just loss of the crown and this is how the radiation eats up the teeth because it causes caries so that will progress into the circumference there will be loss of crown second one is the there is going to be generalized superficial lesions 
so these superficial lesions are present on the buccal surface lingual surface um, occlusal surface palatal surface incisal surface all the surface they will start spreading third one is the dark pigmentation now what happens there is going to be dark pigmentation of the entire crown and the incisal edges we see that there are worn out incisal edges so what do we do to spread this fastest carious rate like the rampant caries these radiation caries how do we stop progressing the radiation caries we give daily these people who are taking radiation therapy we give daily 1 per, uh, 1% neutral sodium fluoride which is in the topical form and this is how we prevent this radiation caries which is as destructive as the rampant caries so what are, what is the effect on the bone as we know that mandible because it is a compact bone because it is a dense bone so what happens there already it has got limited blood supply now what happens when the radiation is coming on to the mandible already it has got limited vascular supply so what will happen whatever the blood is there that will also die so that will cause all the osteoblast osteo uh, osteoclast cell die and this is the reason that the uh, bone undergo osteoradionecrosis so we see that the ostea and ostium it get atrophied so there is lack of osteoblastic cell there is lack of osteoclastic cell we see that the marrow tissues are hypotoxic are hypoxic i'm sorry there is no oxygen because uh, the marrow tissue why do no oxygen there is no blood supply so that also undergo hypocellular hypocellular changes decrease in the cell also so this that under that will happen what will happen then the bone will undergo necrosis which which necrosis osteo bone osteo means bone radio means radiation therapy necrosis means dying so these say bone cells they will start dying due to the radiation therapy which is with a high doses of the radiation therapy mostly we see in the mandible so the bone becomes hypovascular hypocellular hypomineralized everything goes hypo because there is nothing decreased blood supply because of the decreased blood supply all these things happen so what do we do and you know what happens when we are going to extract the teeth after the radiation therapy you know what happens when if we are extracting the teeth after the radiation therapy so we know that the mucous membrane breaks and the infection enters the bone now when the infection enters the bone it leaves a non healing wound which will develop into the osteoradionecrosis then how are we going to prevent it we do not want our patient to go into osteoradionecrosis we also being a dentist what do we do we are going to extract the tooth which have got poor prognosis before the radiation therapy itself and la we are going to give the low epinephrine and lidocaine we try to avoid giving so how do we treat it we give the hyperbaric oxygen therapy so that we give the oxygen therapy also we do the mucocutaneous flap so sometimes we take the fifth rib coming to the last one we have got on the muscle so basically what happens there is inflammation fibrosis that will result in the, into the contracture of the muscle so when the, there is a contracture of the muscle so whenever there is a contracture of the muscle so we know that the whenever there is a contracture the patient suppose the contracture of the mesenteral muscle mesenteral and the pterygoid are the most commonly involved muscle so now wh what happens when there is a contracture of the muscle the patient will not be able to open the mouth there will be contracture right so the, there will be tightly closure of the mouth so the patient will develop into trismus and usually it starts two month after the radiation therapy is over so uh, what do we do it in this case we are going to give the exercise uh, programs to the patient that are going to help in the opening of the mandible usually the muscles of mastication we are talking so guys these are the radiation effects on the oral tissues i hope that you have enjoyed the video next video we are going to talk about acute radiation syndrome so acute radiation syndrome wherein there is we are giving radiation to the whole body not just the oral tissues we will talk about the whole body i hope that you have enjoyed this video so if you have enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up also you can comment in the comment section below there is a link in the description box below to support me on patreon as well as on paypal to make free videos for you guys and to make free notes so till then keep reading keep learning stay motivated i'll see you soon in the next video